Welcome everybody to the RV Podcast 389. And this week we learn what RVers are thinking about. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Wendlin and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. And um, down on the floor is a barking bow. With the leash. <laughs> this is a, is a barking bow. We have had a lot of trouble getting this podcast done today. I'm thinking maybe we're not supposed to do it. Yeah, I <laughs> forget about it. This way. We recorded the whole podcast. And, uh, at the, a we, beautiful spot. At a beautiful spot. In Florida, we're in the Emerald Coast area of Florida, overlooking the water. It was a gorgeous, beautiful day, and the wind noise was so bad that it is unusable. So we retreated to the inside of the RV where we are now. We got about a quarter way through the second time, and our dog decided that he had a lot to say, and he just went on a barking spree. So what about three times? Three times, <laughs> and uh, so. We're looking for anybody want an original. We're looking dog? for just somebody joking. that we can just offer this dog to, because uh, we're going to try it again. I guarantee you're going to hear the dog bark, because uh, he tends to do that. Big news this week: uh, we got our Starlink system from um, uh, SpaceX. Starlink, of course, the uh, very high-speed internet system that Elon Musk is building a constellation of these low-orbiting Earth satellites. Uh, we did a. We were so impressed that we did a live. Um, YouTube and Facebook video on it after we set it up the other day. It took what, 10 minutes to set it up? Not long at all. And it's awesome. We'll have lots more videos. We're going to kind of do a little permanent system here in the RV and we'll show you what that's like when we get it done. But just great results so far. But uh, the news part of it was uh, no sooner did we finish that than we got a note saying that they had raised the price on Starlink. And we skated in because we had ordered it six days before we got it delivered. And the day that we set it up, Starlink went from $4.99, which is what we paid for the system, to $5.99. Uh, they raised it 100 bucks because of inflation. And they also uh, did raise, so we got ours at 500 uh, but now it's uh, 600 for the new ones. Um, but we got our service which we originally contracted for for 99 a month. Now they've raised that to 110. We'll have to pay that. I'm fine with that. Its system is so fast, so reliable. It is. Uh, it's just amazing. Um, so we'll we'll have a lot more to talk about, and we've got a couple questions about it and some comments coming up in uh, the next segment. But uh, some other feedback that we have, we wanted to share it with you. We totaled up how many supporters and followers we have from all of our different platforms and our audience. And it is half a million. Half a million people between all of our different platforms Facebook and, uh, you know, uh, LinkedIn and uh, YouTube and uh, Instagram and all of our different, our blog, half a million people. And so we get a lot of email, lots of comments, lots of great information to share. And that's what we want to do with you in this episode. Like this note that came from David Metzger. And David was uh, commenting about. Uh, uh, our last Ask Us Anything live program that we did in the Big Bend area of Florida near the town, the fishing town of Steinhatchee. We did great until about a half hour after we were on the air and the sun started to set. Well, frankly, on live YouTube and Facebook, we were attacked. <laughs> I, I threw in the towel. I, I waved the white flag. We I were, had I was not going to get eaten alive by no seams. No seams. Oh my goodness! It was unreal. They they were so bad they forced us to retreat into the RV where we are now. And I can prove it. I got so many bug bites. You do. You do. I do. So you want to share this note we got from David Metzger about I would love no to. seams, folks? I was suffering watching the bug attacking. <laughs> we were suffering, David. You just saw us. <laughs> we are preparing for a full time RV next year, and bought property in Keaton Beach. That's not far. Not, that, that's uh, just a few miles down the coastline from where, where we, we were. were. Yep. Our lot has terrible noceums, which attacked at dusk and dawn. But they go, then they go away. I don't know where they go in the daytime, but they go away. I have lived in Florida all my life and have uh, been in uh, South Florida for 40 plus years. I know it's too late, but Roy's and most of the businesses sell repellent at the register. Roy's is the restaurant that we were doing that live show from. 
When I first went to the Keys in 1985, we found that a Avon product called Skin So Soft works well and smells good. Maybe your followers might like to have that information. Can't wait to get the information on the new lots you were looking at. That's why we were in the Big Bend area. We were checking out another development that's selling RV property. These are lots that are like 30 times the normal size of an RV lot. Uh, we'll have a video that'll explain all that. They're not quite ready to go full public on the next offering and we'll have a little, we'll, we'll try and give you advance notice that a video is coming up on that, but no see um, We didn't see them, but we sure felt them and we oh, still we got sure the marks. Did. Yep. I still got the bug bites. Um, the other thing we talked about uh, that we got a lot of comments for is, is we mentioned in answering a question uh, in last week's podcast about uh, how 31 states have various laws about leaving dogs or pets unattended in a vehicle. And a lot of it, you know, is to keep the, the animals safe. And some many of those states you can, anybody who sees a dog, they think in stress, they, they're covered if they break in, break through the glass to rescue the dog. And we talked about how important it is to, uh, to, to have, um, to be close by so you can, if something goes wrong. Well, we got a note here from uh, Dennis, uh, some of our, uh, our viewers, and they said, uh, Mike and Jen, it's always a pleasure to watch your podcast and videos. We have something to add regarding the question. It was about leaving your pet alone in the RV. Something happened to us that could have turned out badly if we hadn't come back in time. We were on the way to South Carolina with our 26-foot Class A. On the highway, a couple in the car next to us waved at us, showing, pointing at the side of our RV and the driver's side. We stopped quickly. We checked. We, we couldn't find anything. That same evening, we stopped at a shopping center where there were several restaurants. So we left our miniature pincer in the RV with the air condition running from the generator power. The whole thing took us about 20 to 30 minutes as we were bringing our meal back to eat inside the RV. When we got near our RV, we heard the carbon dioxide detector beeping. I, well, I don't know if it was carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide, but uh, at any rate, he said, we entered immediately and there was a very strong exhaust odor. Our dog was barking continuously and was very stressed. We no longer used the generator for the rest of that trip. Afterwards, we had our RV inspected and they discovered that the generator exhaust pipe was missing. It had fallen off somehow causing fumes to enter the interior of the RV. Fortunately, our dog had no serious after effects except that she never had the same barking again. She's always maintained a hoarse voice. It constantly reminds us that we have to be careful with our pets. This is from Nicole and Dennis from Quebec, Canada. And, and, and that is a pretty good example right there of why. I mean, there is the unexpected things that shouldn't happen nobody could predict things like that you have to be alert yeah it's 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 a real you know you, i mean Traveling yes with a pet is difficult it, it's as we can attest i mean we love our dog Bo. you see him he's a star in every one of our videos he makes an appearance one way or another but you there are places you can't go uh, and when you do want to sneak out for a little while to get lunch or dinner or maybe you run into a, a, a museum or something, yeah, you can leave the air conditioner on, but something could go wrong. In this case, the air conditioner worked, but they didn't know they had uh, all that exhaust coming in from the generator. Little things can happen. You don't want to. You don't, don't want to leave your pets unattended. With your pet. Yeah, you don't. So um, I appreciate that uh, that tip. Hey, when we come back. Lots more about what RVers are thinking about. Are you tired of overcrowded campgrounds, competing for reservations, paying high fees for sites? Well, ownership is an emerging trend in RVing that might be for you. Jennifer and I recently bought some property just west of Nashville from a great company in Tennessee that specializes in large acreage RV property. They're called Tennessee Land and Lakes. You can check them out at myrvland.com. The scenery and the setting is breathtaking and you own it outright. It's not a timeshare. Your property, your way. You can garden, landscape, bring your pets, your friends. It's big acreage in a private setting. 
There's high-speed fiber optic internet connection along with utilities, a wonderful place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations and it's ready whenever you want to be there. Prices for big acreage start at only $79,900 plus you get us as your neighbors. There's financing available and some really friendly staff to work with. Visit myrvland.com. That is myrvland.com. You'll be glad you did. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborne batteries. Battleborne batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And Battleborne batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig, too. Battleborne battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborne batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Welcome back, everybody. And uh, Mike, let's start out with uh, what people are thinking about Starlink. Yeah, we mentioned Starlink at the top, and we got a lot of feedback. Everybody's interested in getting Starlink. And, and again, we'll have lots more coverage of it as we get uh, our system set up more. But this came from Alan Campbell, and he says, uh, Mike, I have experience with Starlink and several Zoom users for my company and what I have seen is that the signal, Starlink signal, sometimes degrades when the satellite overhead nears the horizon and it does a handoff to the next satellite. Seems to affect video more than audio. The latency, and that's how long it takes for the signal on the ground to get to the satellite or back again. Uh, the latency seems to vary at the same time. More satellites will improve this and of course more open view of the sky would give you more satellites to see. And uh, I appreciate that, uh, Alan. That's a great tip. Uh, right now, you know, there's, I think, uh, 250,000 Starlink users, most of them in the U.S. And uh, they have um, about 2,500 satellites up. They have plans to put over 40,000 up. So um, they're launching new ones every month. And as that, that system fill, uh, fills in, uh, it's all going to work better. Right now, it already works pretty good for us, and uh, we'll tell you more about it later on. Um, you've got one for us. From D Ranger. I have been following you since I bought my road truck in 2013. Two years ago, I sold it and got a new Ram 2500 and a Lance truck camper. Once you have a truck, there is no going back. Would you, would you read that again? Uh, once you have a truck, there is no going back. I love the power, handling, and four-wheel drive. Yeah. And, that <laughs> another plus is the option to drop your camper and have a daily driver. And that is that's one of the reasons we're looking. We haven't made any decisions yet, but we've considered, you know, maybe picking up a fifth wheel or a travel trailer. And uh, then we can leave that at our property in Tennessee and also the property we soon hope to get in northern Michigan be able to use. Uh, and then using our RV to, to kind of go back and forth in our, you know, the one we're in now, the, the, the Leisure Travel Vans Wonder. Um, we're just thinking about it. But I have been pricing trucks, oh my goodness, ridiculous expenses. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so thank you. That's one of the reasons to do it, to have that daily driver. And, uh, you know, you can, you don't, you don't have to pack, break, out, break camp every time you want to go off exploring. And I think with gas prices being what they are, People want to go someplace and stay there longer. So you would like that option of uh, not having to break camp. And, and that takes us to our next uh, our next thing, talking just about that from Keith and Wynn. Uh, and they say, uh, go ahead. Uh, I have an 83-gallon tank, just under $400 to fill up. Still traveling it is only money. The Chinese will print more. <laughs> well, that's probably too. 83 gallons, $400 to fill up. Uh, that is a lot. And we got another, some more comments. Lots of people talking about gas prices and fuel prices and diesel prices. Andrew Larimore. I have a Class A, 80 gallons, 
and I always have to authorize my card a second time during Phillips. Uh, pro tip, if you go inside, they can authorize it for more. Pumps are set for automatically authorizing $75 purchases. That's That happened to us at one point uh, in, in, on this trip, this extended trip. That and we've never experienced that before. No, I couldn't believe it. I, I got, I, it wouldn't fill it up. $75 wouldn't fill it up. And uh, then on, since then, I've had a couple that are in the $80, $85, and it's fine. But I think more and more of the gas stations are having to reprogram their pumps to handle these expensive uh, uh, gas prices. The uh, one thing... <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> We're doing this, and some young girl in a bikini just ran past. <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for young men these days. She's still running the girl. It's barely covered. <laughs> I know. Right. I'm not going to show you that. There she goes. Just imagine some young girl running around basically naked. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, what I was going to say, oh, what the good news is, besides naked girls running past, the good news is that I think that fuel prices this week seem to have gone down. I'm noticing they're down five, six cents a gallon. So Look out next week or the week after. Yeah, watch out. Uh, all right, here's one from Robert Adams, and he's talking about uh, prices, and it and uh, this was uh, posted on um, our YouTube channel in some of the comments. Uh, he says, it's too expensive. Fuel is astronomical. Park rents are sky high, and that's after paying thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, to get an RV. Uh, it used to be a common man's pastime, but no more. And then there was a great response to that from Bob Palin about that. Doesn't have to be like that at all. Uh, is this podcast We're not gonna, supposed I'm not, to happen? I am not going to edit this out. This is a missing child. In, in, uh, that's why you wanted to... I mean, that's nice uh, you know, um, that they One of those you. emergency... <laughs> I always think the world's coming to an end and a bomb has been launched or something. It hasn't but, happened yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. We'll let I you know. I wonder if they'll tell us if that happens. Okay, so we've had okay, barking Bob. dogs, naked girls... <laughs> And emergency alerts. And this is like about our fourth attempt. We're not going to. I'm not editing <laughs> All right, this. we're not stopping. You're going to see it. So Bob Palin was saying it doesn't, it have, doesn't to have to be. It doesn't have to be like that. Plenty of free places to camp. Don't have to move all the time. And you can find reasonably priced older RV units. And I tend to agree with him with that. It is expensive. I mean, everything is expensive. And uh, we have seen this before. We'll see it again. It will come down. I don't know when. Maybe not soon, but it's going to come down. But, you know, there are ways around. And one of the ways a lot of people do into buying their own property, staying there longer. Uh, others are boondocking more, learning more about that. Buying older RVs, they are available. They're more expensive than they used to be. But, you know, you can either choose, you know, to be a victim about all of this or to try and find ways around it. And that's that's the way we're doing it. We're, we're staying out there on the road. We're going to do our best to keep finding it. However, it is important that people have an understanding of what the RV what life... What you're getting into. What you're getting into, particularly about full-timing. There is not a day that goes by that we don't get a question from somebody who says, Hey, we're, we're thinking about selling everything and going full-time. And... Uh, I really liked this from this, Melissa uh, John Melissa, Long. Melissa and John Long. And they, she posted this on our RV Lifestyle Facebook group. And uh, it's kind of a breakdown of a, from a very experienced full-timer about what to expect out there in the road. Do you want to share her sure. we'll kind of both Food go into thought. this? You may not uh, need any of this, but if one sentence helps you, then I'm glad I shared it. Uh, so they're full-timers. First, you need eight to ten thousand uh, dollars put up for emergency. And you know that is what everybody recommends everyone have anyway. But in particular, if you're going to full time in an RV, remember that is your home. If it has to get repaired and it has to be in a shop, then what are you going to do? So don't even think about going off full time unless you have such a cushion. At least a month. They say two months of uh, emergency I've funds. Heard three months. Well, you know, I, it depends on, you know, how, what your lifestyle is like. But uh, I think that's, if you hear nothing other than that and you think about full dummy, uh, Make sure hear you that. Make sure you got some money in the bank. Yeah. Um, some more. 
living uh, full time is neither cheap and it's not easy uh, and it's not for the faint of heart. You have to be able to do your own repairs. Yeah, she. This is a two people who've been full timing. They're in their sixties, she said. And uh, the reason you want to do your own repairs is because, as she says, the RV guys will eat you for dinner. <laughs> they get 150 bucks an hour, and rightfully so, since that's their livelihood and it's and it's a particular skill. Um, some other things that you got to think about. Something to think about is that their truck and their car are paid for. So that's important. They don't but, have and those. And the things. RV, though, they do have a payment of three twenty-five a month. Okay, payment for your RV three twenty-five. And sites can routinely cost seventy-five dollars for full hookup. Uh, can be less, uh, more depending on the park and the amenities and the location. I think we're seeing that in our travels that yes. seventy seventy-five dollars is a pretty Shall common it? fee now. <laughs> it used to be thirty, and then it was forty, and then fifty. Uh, the last one we stayed at at, uh, at a KOA, KOA was seventy seven dollars, and we have a KOA membership card, but it was still seventy five bucks a night. That is a, a lot night. of money. Yes, it is. So you, we don't do that every night. Uh, okay, what other costs is she talking about? One hundred and twenty five a month for vehicle insurance, full coverage, both vehicles for the car and uh, gotta and, have your insurance for the truck rather and the and the trailer. Yep. Two hundred and forty uh, minimum for phones, internet. 240 bucks a month, they have two phones, uh, they have internet, and uh, a tablet. So they're, that's about, that's about normal, you know, for, for most people who need connections on the road. $84 a month or 900 a year RV full-timers insurance on RV. The big one, food, she says. $560 is what this couple in their 60s pay. Uh, and eating out, 300 and, and of course your entertainment how much you eat out where you eat out whether it's mcdonald's or if it's a steakhouse yeah that's up to you but an idea of what food and entertainment costs so that's so between eating out and food this couple spends about 860 bucks a month figure a thousand a month yeah i think that's that's particularly with food prices yes going food's up. going fat, up too. almost like gas yeah but we're not done yet you know then you have your doctor's visits and medicine also depending on insurances uh that's what they pay monthly and uh live comfortably and they've been doing this full time for 18 years Say so they point out that over the past couple of years, there's been some 500,000 new RVs or used RVs that uh, have gone back on the road. Uh, that because of that, uh, uh, RV parks she's noticing are much stricter on the age of an RV that they allow to camp there, and they're also strict about the breeds of dogs, uh, how much those dogs weigh how many d dogs people are allowed to have um, well, i've seen people with five dogs and yeah and many parks will now prohibit that they protect you know so, little ones yeah yeah but still it's a lot of dogs uh so so understand that we mentioned a little earlier about the challenges of of being with the traveling with the dog we think it's great we still do and you ought to have a dog like we have a norwegian elkhorn that looks like a wolf or a German Shepherd yeah. that a lot of people are terrified yeah. when they just look at him. We've never He's not 65 been, pounds. We've never been told we couldn't bring him in. No, not but yet. We hear from others that there are problems. She notes that there are not enough sites to go around. Mm -hmm. Unless you book months or maybe even a year in advance, and uh, monthly rates. That's the cheapest way to to do it if you can do it for a month. If you can find a park that'll that'll, that'll do allow that. you to do that. Yep. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, her last line is just don't go into full-time living thinking that it's easy or cheap. And she says, I would bet that if you find a cheap RV park in your location, you won't be happy. And we have also seen that. They're, they're, they're like mobile home ghettos sometimes, uh, the cheap ones, the really cheap ones. I think a lot of people think if they get an RV, they're going to find these boondocking or free places to stay and it's going to be cheaper and cheaper than a house. Yeah. And it, you know, it's all okay, but you got to have your eyes open when you go into something. Yep. Do your research. Yes. And uh, uh, we really, really want to thank uh, this couple, uh, Melissa and John, Melissa Long, and John for, Long, for taking time. I mean, veteran RVers have been doing that 18 years. They know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that was great advice. 
Now, we've got some questions and we're going to answer those when we come back. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and that we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. Welcome back. And now it's time for the questions of the week. And let's start off with this from Lisa Sums, who says she just subscribed to our hey, channel. Hey, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, please do so right now. We need it. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. And like. Please. Yeah. And like. And like. Yep. Thumbs up. Uh, but uh, watching for the past few months, uh, we would like to buy a wonder from the factory. Is that possible to order just straight from the factory and not have to get a local dealer involved? And if we do, how do you do the deposit? And not sure how this all works. We have just heard and continue to hear horrible things about salespeople and hidden costs at RV dealers. What would you propose? Um, well, that's a big question. Um, first question is no, and not if you're looking for a wonder. Which is this RV we're in now? Uh, it's made by Leisure Travel Vans, and you cannot order uh, directly from the factory. They're not factory direct. You have to go through one of their dealers. However, you can go to their website and you can uh, kind of uh, build with the quotes around it your own RV with all the features and the options that you want. And then your job is then to take that to a dealer. You'll have a rough idea of the price. Now understand that dealers tack on delivery fees and inspection fees and transportation fees and and depending on how scrupulous the dealer is uh, that's how high the the fees are but there will be some extra fees on whatever you figure out online uh, but they are not factory direct so uh, you, you you can't buy that way do you remember how upset we got when we got our first one and there was like a seven hundred and fifty dollar inspection fee oh my goodness we were, we were. like what yeah and we said, what do you mean? Who's in, you guys inspected? They don't inspect it. shouldn't need to be inspected. It just came from the factory. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, this, don't get me started on deals, but, uh, <laughs> but it is always, you know, most ma bigger manufacturers like Leisure, you got to go through a, their dealer network. And if you're not happy with one dealer, find another. It's always good to find one local, but if you don't like the way they're treating you, go somewhere else. Um, you do have to put a deposit down. Uh, you're talking about still there's a long delay involved between ordering and getting delivery. Um, you might have to put several thousand dollars down in a deposit. We have heard about some dealers, not leisure travel van dealers, but other dealers who've insisted on a non-refundable deposit. That's painful. I would not recommend that you do that uh, at all. That's that's exploiting, um, uh, you know, a seller's market. Don't ever pay a non-refundable thing. Go somewhere else. Find a dealer that is a little more has a little more scruples than that. Um, so yeah, you'll hear bad stuff. Uh, I think bad dealers are in the minority. Uh, if you've got one, just look elsewhere and you'll find a good one. But uh, it's a process. It is a process. There are some RV manufacturers where you can order directly from the factory. I think of Coach House, which makes a really nice Class C in Nokomis, Florida. Um, we just did a story on... Um, who's, a, who's their custom cruisers? Yeah, in Elkhart, Indiana, that makes a really nice Class C. So you can find them. Uh, so there you go. Thank you, Lisa, for that question. Uh, here's one from Pam Freeman. Do you ever consider towing a car? Yes, we do. Yeah. Uh, we More so. The longer we go, the more we're thinking about towing a car and it goes back again to when you find some place because of the price of gas and everything stay there longer you don't have to unhook have a car readily available or something and 
run yeah. around that way. And and if if you've been following, our goal this year in much of our camping is to stay in different spots a little longer than we normally do. For the first ten years, say the first few years of those ten years, we were seldom in any place more than one or two nights at the most. And while we had so much of the country we wanted to see we really find that we have to go back now. We really want to experience certain places. I think like the Nebraska sand hills. We just yes. love that area, but we only spent a couple of days there. I'd love to go spend a week or so or two even exploring it. Mm -hmm. So that's when we think, why well, it would be nice just to set up camp, you know, and leave everything hooked up. It doesn't take, it's not, it's not a big deal to unhook, particularly in a smaller RV like this, but still, it would be nice and then travel it's easier to park and if you're going to visit a city it's easier to get you know uh, uh, park on the street so yes we indefinitely have thought of that um, here's one from Wendy Wolf she says we hope to boondock with our RV how do you manage to recharge your e-bike batteries um, we just plug them in uh, now I don't know what kind of an RV you you have in terms of uh, you know whether you have solar and how big your inverter is but uh, if you have inverted plugs and you have a full battery, you can charge those little those little e-bike lithium batteries. There's it's only a brick about that big. Um, so yeah, you can run those. Just plug them in to uh, to one of the inverted plugs that works off your RV inverter, and they'll charge. Uh, you say it takes a while. Ours just charges in a couple of hours, and it's not a terrible draw. It doesn't empty my house batteries or anything like that. Um, so if you if you have a generator, start your generator up. If you're worried about you know, about that, or use your your uh, engine on your motorhome to start that up, and if that charges your house batteries, but just just running those little lithium batteries for an e-bike, you can plug it into an inverted plug. Um, so so thank you very much, Wendy, for that one. Okay, we got another question. All right, this is from Trent, and he says, "Hey, Mike and Jen, thank you so much for taking the time to read my email." I recently just found about your podcast and have been listening. My wife and I are planning to live on 100 acres for two years in an RV, then build our home there as well in Tennessee. Our house is currently under contract to sell, and we have been frantically searching for an RV, specifically a fifth wheel. We desire to buy used, but every one we've looked at has had water damage on both the master bedroom and the living room on the corners. Even those who are selling their fifth wheels, they don't even know that they have the water leaks until we show them to them, until they point them out to them. Is water damage a major fix in RVs? We just need help to find an RV quick, and we have been traveling all around just to find someone that isn't water damaged. Thanks for your help. Yeah, it is a big deal if it's serious water damage. Now, there might be some stains, some discoloration from some water that came in, and if that's the case, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's that it you've got a major fix, but I would certainly have a professional look at it. You don't want uh, it to be damp underneath that, or behind that. You don't want mold to grow. Uh, many of the older RVs do indeed have some water damage. Uh, this is why, when, when even when you're buying a new one, have it inspected. Have somebody, a professional, look at it and make sure because uh, it can be very expensive to fix or it can be just something that's more cosmetic. Maybe a, they've already fixed it, they've done some caulking. Uh, typically, you'll find those leaks developing around the vents, around the air conditioning systems. Uh, sometimes at the very front, where the the cab connects with the uh, with the with the box with the RV box, um, have it checked. And as you can see, that it is uh, it has been a problem with many of them. So, uh, and I think how expensive was this RV when they, it was first purchased? I mean, the quality of it. Yeah. You know, usually cheaper ones aren't built as well as others. And then you also have the factor of roads. I mean, and people driving too fast and taking those holes and potholes much too fast. I mean, it's a perpetual earthquake. Yes, it is. It's driving down the roads, always yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, so Trent, you're doing the right thing. You're checking it all over like that, but you will find what you want. Just just keep looking. Just a matter they're of not time. all like that. They're no. not all. A uh, question from Joe Donnelly. It says, we joined Harvest Host, contacted a host to make a reservation. We left messages. 
but have not heard back, is this a common problem? Uh, it shouldn't be a, a big problem, and it says he left messages, so more than one message, and you have to give the harvest host people a break because they have lives, and you park there and maybe you buy a bottle of wine or a pair of socks. But they don't you know, make It's not a lot. like they're yeah. making money. It's more of a service to you, I think, than the people that you're staying with. And they have lives and they have emergencies and kids and performances and plays to go to and whatever. So I wouldn't judge the whole program like that. We've used Harvest Host all across the country. Yeah. We've never not been able to reach the host. Um, but you know, many of them are just mom and pop operations. Maybe it's a farm and they're out taking care of the animals. and. Uh, you know, you wanted something for that night, they didn't get to you, and the night's already gone, so they're not going to call you back and say, hey, you know, they, they have hours. So so if you don't get a call back, just always have a plan B. Go to another one. Find another Harvest Host. But uh, we've found nothing but great things about the program. If you're interested in Harvest Host, we can save you 20%, by the way. Just go to rvlifestyle.com slash hh. You can learn more about the program. And more importantly, if you use that link, rvlifestyle.com slash hh, it'll save you um, 20%. So that's a good deal. All right, the, now we got a gruff idea of what you RVers are thinking about out there. Keep those cards and letters coming in and emails. Uh, gee, I don't think anybody writes cards or letters <laughs> anymore. Uh, but uh, I can't remember when the last time I even got a letter. Do you? Mm -mm. No, maybe a card. But anyway, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, our private email is Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. That's it for episode 389. Wherever you are, we hope you're having a great time, and we'll be back next week. Happy trails.